everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and you can see that I have hanging behind me our Missouri Star Quilt Block quilt. This is the quilt we hang up when we want to show you something else. There is a tutorial for it. You can find that link in the description below. But a few weeks ago, I needed a baby quilt, and so I thought I would just take one block, one Missouri Star Block. It makes a 24-inch block. See, this is how it fits in, just like that. Great, nice big block, and I thought if I bordered it a couple of times, it would make a beautiful baby quilt. So the quilt I posted on Facebook that I'd done um, was with out of blue fabrics. This one, you can see it's out of this awesome line by Riley Blake. It's called Fancy and Fabulous, and it's by Fancy Pants. And again, it's for Riley Blake. And so it's these cool orange colors and, you know, the greens and the oranges. I love that. We put a four-inch background border on first to set the star off. Then we finish that up with a six inch floral border. And you can see this is it right here. Makes a great quilt, really a fun size, perfect size for a baby quilt, uh, just a darling little quilt. So with one block, you can get a quilt. Now what I really wanna show you in this tutorial is how to make that awesome flange binding. You know the binding that, uh, that they make that is made with two colors, so it looks like piping. I'm gonna move this so I can show you this. So take a look at this. This is our binding, and doesn't that look like I've put a little tiny piece of piping in there? I mean, it's just a, just a perfect, perfect little binding, and I wanna show you how to do that. And we're actually gonna put it on here so you'll know exactly how to do it. Now, this binding is made using two different strips. One is one and three quarters. One is one and a half. Now your bigger piece is gonna come out of your flange. So what I have here is I have taken my background fabric or my flange fabric and I folded it in half just like this. I'm gonna line it up on my mat to make sure um, I get straight cuts, make sure my selvage edge is lined up down here, make sure my fold is lined up down here, and then I'm gonna clean up this edge right here. So I'm just gonna trim this off clean this up. Now, I'm going to cut this first piece one and three quarters. Um, then also, so however many strips you need for your quilt, you're going to need the same amount of strips uh, with the flange binding of both colors though. So I'm, I need, this is only 41 inches, and so I'm going to need four strips that are one and three quarter, and then four strips of my color so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut four of these, and I have some of those cut already. Then you're gonna cut your color strip, which I have a piece right here, just like this. So your background flange was one and three quarters. Your top color fabric is gonna be one and a half. So I'm gonna straighten this up, make sure I'm lined up here. Wait, it looks like I need to adjust my fold a little bit. You want to make sure that your fold is, is straight, that your selvage edges are lined up pretty straight on there, that this lays down nice. So now I'm going to cut from this side, so I'm going to clean up this edge. Make sure, here we go. Better to check than to be sorry. All right, so this one is now going to be one and a half inches. And again, I want you to be able to do this on anything because this is such a cool look. So remember, however many strips you need, like if you need you know, eight strips for your binding, you're gonna need eight strips of each one of these. So now what you're gonna do, you're gonna have your two strips, and for instance, I need four of these, so I'm gonna sew all of my whites together, just like I'd normally sew my binding. I'm gonna sew all of my colors together as well. When I get them all together, strip after strip after strip, then I'm gonna sew these two together, just like this. And so you can see that they're off a little bit, but um, that's how they're supposed to be. Once the background color is one and three quarters, the top color is one and a half. So let's go ahead and sew these together. Let me put my quilt over here for a minute. And we're gonna sew these together so I can show you how this is gonna work. You're just gonna do a quarter of an inch and you want to be kind of careful about that quarter of an inch because you could lose your flange if your quarter of an inch is a little bit too fat because you could see that I didn't have very much room with mine. All right. So you're just gonna sew right down here. These are laid right on top of each other 
and you're going to sew down the whole side. All right, here we are to the end. Okay, so now what we want to do is press this open. And what you want to do is you want to put your, um, your colored fabric on top or your smaller fabric because we want to roll this back like this and make sure that that, especially if you have a white piece like I do, you don't want your seam allowance to show through. So we're just going to lay this back and iron it open like this. We want the whole thing pressed open. Just like that. And once you get this pressed open, then you're going to press it again. Now we're going to press it like we'd normally press our binding right in half. And if you've done this correctly, you should be able to see the little white part just peeking up right there, just peeking out. So we're going to go ahead and press this, fold it right in half. So line up your edges. You're pressing wrong sides together. And this should be pressed down nice and flat. And then wrong sides together, the whole thing. So you're going to go ahead and keep pressing this until you press the whole thing. And I have one over here that's all done and ready to go. It's right here. Now remember, um, I told you earlier that when you go to uh, put your binding together, you're going to sew your strips together individually. So I want to open up and show you how this goes here. So right here you can see I've sewn the green ones, all the green ones together first, end to end, then all the white ones together, end to end. Then I sew the two strips together, iron it open, press it in half, and we're ready to go. So let me show you how you do this. Because, you know, a lot of times I'll get a, um, a tutorial that says, that says uh, I can no longer put my binding on by hand. Uh, is there an easy way to do it on the machine? Well, this is one of those machine ways. So we're going to treat this just like normal binding. But what we're going to do is we're going to put it our, on the, from the back first, and we're going to put the outside fabric right next to our quilt. So we're going to come over here to the sewing machine and just put this on just like we normally would with our outside fabric. Hang <laughs> on, i got to get the other end. I wrapped this up backwards. All right, here we go. Outside fabric to the back of the quilt. Now, a lot of people ask me about my backs as well. I love to use scraps on my back, and I also like, um, you know, I just use the, the bolt yardage. I like to use that on my back. So that's what I've got here is just some scraps that came from the line. And it makes it's a fun way to use some of those prints uh, from the, you know, from the line, yardage line. Fun way to use them up. All right, so what I've got is right sides together, and I'm just going to sew this all the way around the quilt. All right, we're coming up to this last corner, and I want to show you again how to make this corner. And so we come within a quarter of an inch. We're going to stop and we're just going to sew off the edge. Then I like to turn it. And I just make sure this right here folds up just even on the top right there. And then we're just going to sew down that other side. All right, now before we get to this end part right here, I want to show you again how to finish this because this may be the first time you're watching a binding tutorial, and this is a great way to finish it. So what I have is two tails here, and this is the way you can finish all your bindings this way. This isn't special for this type. What I'm going to do is, however wide they are, ours is two and a half, totals two and a half. You're going to overlap it two and a half and then just make a cut there. Now you may want to measure it. I've done this about a billion times, so I'm okay with not measuring mine. Uh, I know pretty close how mine's going to come out. Then you're going to sew it together just like you sew your binding together. And that's why we leave the little bit of tails because you need some wiggle room. So you're going to open this one up here, 
the one that's coming towards you. You're going to open it up. You're going to lay the one that comes up from your lap across it like this, and you're going to sew from left to right. So I hope this works. Hang on. We want to make sure that it's lined up pretty straight because we're going to have that little X in there where our uh, flange comes across. Now let's see if it worked. The big moment. <laughs> All right, so there we have it, just like that. And it'll lay down real nice. Now mine is a little bit tight. I could have moved that over just a hair to make a little more room. But I like um, a little bit tighter, you know, it snugs in there. So now you're just going to go ahead and sew it down. And that's how you end your binding, as easy as that. So let me finish this little stitch line right here. And there, now our binding is all sewn on. Now the magic part happens. So now what we're going to do is we're going to flip this over. And we're going to bring our binding around to the front. And can you see what just happened here? Let me show you right here so we can get this top camera on it. When you bring this binding around to the front, can you see that little flange, how it appears? I mean, it just instantly appears like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to stitch right in this ditch right here, right in this seam line so that, uh, so that we can make sure that, that we catch this on here. And it won't show our stitch because we're stitching right in that ditch. Wherever two, two fabrics come together, where the seam is, they call that in the ditch. Like you'll hear about people who are quilting in the ditch. They're not actually in a ditch. It's this ditch we're talking about. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll this around and we're going to stitch in that ditch. And you can line it up with your stitch line. You can pull it over so it's just about a quarter of an inch. Now I want to show this overhead as well right here because when we get to this corner, because of the way we folded our corners on the back, this corner is also going to line up perfectly. So we'll have it like this, and we fold this over. You want to just make sure that your little um, flange meets up like that. You're just going to stitch right around that corner, just right in the ditch right there, and it's just, I mean, it's just going to look perfect. So let's go ahead and sew this on so we can see it. We'll head over here. And I'm just going to lay this over. You want to make sure you cover up your, the stitch line, the line that you actually sewed your, your binding on with. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my needle down there, just set it down, and I'm going to sew in the ditch. Now, just so you know, stitching in the ditch is not the easiest thing you're going to do. But um, it's a great way to put on binding. You have a line to follow. You probably aren't going to be able to rush around it but you're also not going to be able to see that stitch line. And so it's, it's just going to make a real fun finished edge on your quilt. Now, when I come to a corner, what I like to do is I like to, the piece that I'm coming toward, I like to fold up first. So I'm going to fold this bottom line up first, and then I'm going to fold my side piece down to meet it. And that way, when I'm sewing around, I don't have to go up on the fabric. I just get to sew right around. So we're going to come around here. I am going to leave my needle down in that corner and pivot and then come around here like this. And then I can just keep sewing. I don't have to like pop up on that fabric. So now we're just going to keep sewing and putting this on, stitching in the ditch. So now we're finished. Let's take a look at it. How cute is that? Don't you love the look of that flange? I mean, it's just such a great look. Let's take a little bit closer look here. We're right here. You can see. I mean, it just makes a little edge there, a little bit of piping. Uh, I mean, it just looks so cute and it was so easy. And I hope you'll be able to use this on lots of quilts. And we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the flange binding from the Missouri Star Quilt Company.